Welcome back to another edition of Nest Egg. A few weeks into January now. Um, obviously, we want to do a kind of a market update. People have been asking what's going on in the world because it's been pretty different since the beginning of the year. So, Quint, what's going on? It's amazing. The calendar shifted, and it's like everybody woke up and said, maybe it's not all that bad. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, January, the first few weeks in, <clears throat> obviously, it's been a good hot start to the year. But we can't really get ahead of ourselves. I mean, let's face it. We really don't know what's going to transpire with the Fed. Uh, we do know inflationary pressure is coming down considerably, and that's kind of given the the tailwind, if you will, to the markets. What I do find fascinating, however, is, and this is one thing that folks can really under try to understand at home, is that so much negativity is priced into the market now, especially these individual companies, that any hint of somewhat decent news is met with big buying. For example, J.P. Morgan last week came out with numbers. They weren't great. The numbers weren't good. They had increased loan loss provisions. And Jamie Dimon even basically came out and said, the economy's not great. You know, we see a recession on the horizon. The market went up, or the stock went up like 6%, right? And so you have to scratch your head and go, wait a second. Wh why did the stock rise when the numbers weren't all that great? Because the market itself, participants were expecting much worse numbers than were delivered. Today, we see that with Netflix. By all accounts, the numbers weren't great, but the stock is advancing about 7%. Why? They said, hey, subscriber growth is pretty good. We still have a business. Mm -hmm. And people are like, wait a second, you're supposed to go out of business, aren't you? Isn't the market going to you know, go to zero? Last comment I'll make on that is we have Microsoft, one of the largest tech, even the largest technology company coming up. And this is what's fascinating. On Wall Street, you have what's called a consensus estimate of earnings. That's all the Wall Street analysts getting together and pretty much creating an average. And the consensus estimate for the Microsoft earnings is $2.29 a share. Now, you also have a more important number on Wall Street called a whisper number. Just like it sounds, it's a whisper of what people really think they're going to report. That's the number that matters. That's the number that institutions and traders really care about. The consensus is $2.29. Most of the time, whisper numbers are higher than that. Okay. What that leads people to say is, well, they can't just beat the consensus. They got to beat the whisper. They got to do better than what people are expecting. Guess what the whisper is? 225, mm. lower than the consensus. So Microsoft could be a good example, similar to Netflix, where they don't actually, they don't actually meet or beat consensus earnings. And that could be positive for the stock right? because people are thinking it's going to be worse. The point is, summary is, we talked about this at the end of last year with the piece that said buying high, selling low. Clearly not what you want to do. Everything has basically been baked into the, Not everything. A lot has been baked into this market at these levels. And any hint of good news, or maybe just not bad news, could lift the market continually from here. Well, and I think the market is very focused on the Fed, and they speak here on February 1st. So what's your thoughts on what could happen in that meeting? So the Fed should be and continue to be data-driven, and the data is indicating that inflationary pressure is subsiding considerably, even in the employment sector. So that's something that the Fed's going to hit on. Now, inevitably, you have Fed governors coming out with just you know, no forward uh, understanding of what the future is going to hold and telling us that, yeah, rates are going to be higher for a very long time. And, and it's just it's almost laughable because, you know, they really don't have any understanding about what the future is. I will find one thing interesting or one thing I want to bring up one last thing, and that is nobody's talking about the debt ceiling and the default rate. We basically hit our debt ceiling yesterday. We're cutting this on Friday. Congress has yet to make a decision whether they're raising that debt ceiling. By all intents and purposes, we are on the road to default. This is a great example of how Wall Street has sort of already digested this and really doesn't think it matters. Since World War II, we've raised our debt ceiling over 100 times. Yeah. The reality is Wall Street thinks it's just going to happen at some point in the future. We're going to just kick that can down the road. Unfortunately, that's what Wall Street thought a lot about the Fed last year, and it never happened. I, too, think the debt ceiling will be raised eventually. I do not think that we're going to go into default and ha we own half our own bonds. I don't even know what that looks like. Point being is, is that we get to a point where the market no longer cares. The market is kind of absorbed. We don't really care. And I feel like we're getting there with inflation and the Fed. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I feel like we're getting there. We're getting back to business 
which is great, which is good news for participants. Yeah, good. Okay, uh, and speaking of the government and a question that we've been getting throughout this year, right at the end of the year last year, we had the Secure Act 2.0 passed. What is kind of the highlights of that, Daniel, and what what is the kind of most important things our listeners should should understand about that new act that was passed last year. Yeah, Congress snuck this in uh, right at the last hour into the last couple of days of the year. This uh, got signed and uh, went into effect. The biggest news that will affect uh, a lot of the people that we work with is a moving up of the RMD ages. Uh, so starting with people who would have normally started taking RMDs this year at age 72, uh, that is pushed out to age 73, and then it graduates actually up to eventually age 75. Uh, is what we'll see there in the future. So that'll have the biggest impact. We're actually updating financial plans for that now. Another thing we'll see uh, that'll actually impact wealth development folks uh, on their journey towards retirement is you will now be able to have your employer contribution portion of your 401k go into a Roth component as well. Now that will account for income on your W-2, but that's a great savings vehicle as well as the addition of Roths to Simples and SEPs uh, are gonna be fantastic as well. There's other nuances uh, to the legislation, but we'll be updating those uh, and writing about those as, as kind of the year goes by. I will say when it comes to the 401k Roth option and things like that, it's actually going to take some time to get these things into practice. We're talking about uh, administrators and brokerages and things like that having to make a pretty massive update to their system for a law that was just signed into effect two weeks ago. Daniel, the uh, so if somebody is 72 this year mm -hmm. and they were anticipating having to take that required minimum distribution, you're saying that now is pushed out another year to 73. 73. Nobody should take their or need to take, if they're planning on taking their first RMD this year, as of last year, they will not need to start that this year. Anybody who turns 72 this year does not need to start taking an RMD. That was the previous legislation. You can now wait till 73. If you were supposed to start an RMD last year, you still should take that. Uh, there was a subtle nuance regarding 529s and converting to the Roth. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is an interesting planning strategy because it allows uh, unused funds in a 529 plan up to $35,000, I believe the number was, to be rolled over to a Roth IRA so long as the 529 has been open for 15 years. So uh, for folks with young kids, this is actually a great option to fund the 529s to some extent. And then after 15 years, if those funds aren't used for college, roll those into a Roth IRA. Really give a good start uh, to the retirement saving journey of your kids. These are things uh, most of you obviously are working with us in a planning capacity. Uh, if you're not and we reach out to you in the next few months just as a normal touch as we typically do, um, let's broach the subject. Let's bring you in and let's talk about that. Uh, as many of you are watching and, and viewing this, you know now we have had the great privilege of working with more and more people all throughout the United States. It's really amazing, even such that on the homepage of our website, which if you haven't visited that in a long time, jewelfinancial.com, that's J-O-U-L-E, financial.com, you will literally see a map. I'm really proud of this, a map of all the locations where we have clients all throughout the United States. Please do take, take a look at that. It's amazing. And one of the positives that came out of COVID, not many, but one of the positives that came out of COVID is this real wide use of technology. We have implemented that, really embraced that in our business. And now we have the ability to work with people all over the United States from the comfort of their own home. We can conduct Zoom calls. We can do planning strategies. We can do investment strategy meetings. We can do investments. We can do it all from the comfort of your own home in any state in America. So if you're listening to this, if you're in some state, you've followed us for a long time and you thought, yeah, but they're in central Kentucky, really can't work with them. Now you can. You should take uh, under consideration that we work with all these people throughout the United States. All right, fantastic. Everybody have a great weekend out there, and keep sending in your questions to Nestec. Uh -huh.